it's covering it's covering the things that these athletes clearly have deemed to help success, right? Ability to run at a fast pace with a low lactate. Yeah. Ability to create lactate, but then flush it and work with it and tolerate it while you're training. They're, they're covering a lot of the basics, but in a really amazing and efficient way. That's what they can handle is this double threshold model. You should take from it that I should be trying to get my threshold pace to its fastest pace possible without getting injured by using control. talking about today specifically is the Ingebrigtsen threshold training model, if that's what you want to call it. I think it's going to be really useful because to discover more about not just threshold training, what I know about their training conversations I've had with Henrik about the training, it becomes more about an educational tool you could say explore in their system about why does it work what could you take from that system to your own do you have a training system are you covering all the basics etc it's a model that has clearly created a lot of success we've now lately seen that it has created success in athletes that aren't just Ingebrigtsen's and so we can't use this excuse that you know maybe it's a very talented family other athletes have adapted it other athletes in the world in fact lots of athletes in the world have started to use some of the stuff that we can learn from the Ingebrigtsens but today I want to go through what I know about it what I've learned from using that system in my own training some of the state mistakes sorry I made trying to bring that system into my system um, and really explore threshold a little bit and then try to make it relevant to you guys at home. You can find literature online, you know, whether it's PDF documents, whether it's stuff written on message boards about what they do, whether it's seeing Instagram stories, reels, posts, other people's posts about what they do. You can hear rumors. Today, I'm going to go through all of that but also why they do it the way they do, I think, from my knowledge, and then maybe what you can learn from it. Just because they are known to do 25 400s doesn't mean that that's the right session for you. Just because they're known to periodize their year in a certain way, just because they're known to do double thresholds, it doesn't mean that that's the perfect system for you. So I'm going to go through what I know and let me be very clear that it's only what I know. I'm not an Ingebrigtsen. I have only trained with them little bits. I will not be talking about specifics in terms of details that they've told me by whether it's Instagram message or in person. I think that's unfair. What I'll share is what I know about it, what I've seen, what you could find online, but I'll try to tailor it in a way that it makes sense to you guys watching and that you can fucking learn something and apply it to your own training without perhaps digging a hole of fatigue or ignoring some of the things that would make their system specific to the races that you do. Okay, so the starting point I think that's brilliant is what is this Ingebrigtsen system? What we've learned and seen online what you can find online, what anybody can find online is this typical 
think the stereotype or idea about the Ingebrigtsen system is two double threshold sessions a week, so lots of work at threshold, and then a structured session on a Saturday, either hills or maybe specific to the next race, and often that night, more threshold. So the Ingebrigtsens have almost reinvented the idea that threshold running is super, super important, but doing it in a very controlled and monitored way that over time you just get quicker and quicker. Controlled and monitored way so that you don't get tired in the process because if you're keeping the lactate at a certain number, you're not overdoing it, which hopefully has two outcomes. You don't get super tired and you make more progress, more bang for your buck, but you don't get super tired. That, I think, is what people think about the Ingebrigtsen system. What I'd add to it is the volume. So it's pretty much like 100 mile a week. Um, the runs aren't slow. So it's kind of steady endurance, you could probably say. Most of the runs are done at, I think, 340 to four minutes per K. In the Ingebrigtsen series on YouTube, there was a lot of talk about four blanks, no quicker than four blanks. But from what I know, running with the guys and what you've seen, there's a lot of runs at 340 per K. So not jogging is what I would say. There's gym work in there. There's, you know, sprints in there, like strides. I've seen it in Sierra Nevada on the indoor track. I've seen it on the outdoor track. It's a full system built on what I will say is strength. It's a strength-based system. I don't mean strength in the gym. I mean getting your threshold and aerobic endurance to a place that you're super strong, which means you can run really fast. And because you're still aerobic and you haven't gone anaerobic and you haven't built up lots of lactate, you're in a good place. That, at the heart and soul of it, is the Ingebrigtsen training system from what what I spoke about first is what most people think of it. What I added to it about the gym, the mileage, the sprints, the steady runs, that is the full system. What do I think people, when they try to do the Ingebrigtsen system, probably fail to get right is that it's a full system. And so if you just do the double threshold and you don't do the like, a couple of things, double threshold, specific session. This system has been built specific to sort of 1505K. Why I say that is because, yes, they're using this double threshold, but double threshold is just so that, read the Marius back an article, it's so that there's an idea, and I think it's based on evidence as well, that if you break the threshold up into a double threshold, you can do more volume, which is kind of like saving money. If you could save more money each week, amazing, you'd have more money at the end of the day. They're trying to maximize how much threshold they can do per week, per month, per year. By breaking it up into a double threshold, you have enough time to recover so you can come back in the afternoon and do it again. If you did it all in one go, instead of five times 2K, you did 10 times 2K. The idea is that it doesn't, you don't recover as well, and so the benefits aren't as good. You might have to do six or seven. Seven times 2K, 14K, five times 2K in the morning, 10 by 1K at night, 20K. More volume at threshold per week, per month, per year. In the least injury cost way. That's important. The next thing to point out about that specific system Five times 2K of 30 seconds rest or a minute rest. I tried this for Rotterdam in 2021. I got to a point where I could run 2Ks really quick and keep my lactate really low. But because I never worked on extending for how long I could run at 2Ks at a low lactate, at 37 kilometers, I got tired. And instead of running 209, I, I faltered and ran 214. I was still on pace for 209 at 37K. I felt amazing up until that point, but that's what I mean by you must still use the system in a good way, but train specifically for you. How they train specific for their event is likely the 25 400s. It's like, of course they could go do six mile in one go, but it's like they've made threshold work event specific. 
So we talked about the specific session on a Saturday, but by doing 25 400s, they can basically run at the fastest pace possible while still getting that threshold benefit. So they're doing 10K of work, but because it's only 400 meter reps, they can run pretty fast. If that's important to your event, that's a good session to do. If how fast you run at threshold isn't as important for your event, sorry, I got that wrong. If speed isn't the most important part of your event, marathon, yes, of course, you'd like to be fast at threshold, but it's not like you need to run, Jakob needs to run 55 to 56 seconds per lap or something in a 1500 now. Even Eloide Kipchoge, who's the world record holder, only has to run at 68 to 70. So it's not as important speed. And so when you're going to make those threshold days specific to your event, you probably don't need to go 25 400s. Five times 2K should probably be the lowest volume of threshold that you do in terms of rep length, if you then want to run a marathon. In the off season, not during a marathon buildup, of course you could copy the system. That's fine. That's, that's a good time to do the 25 400s, the 2Ks, the 1Ks. But in that marathon specific phase, there's no problem with double threshold. Remember, double threshold is just the idea that you can get more threshold done while recovering quicker and not have that residual fatigue on the body. That's still important, but you also must make it event specific. It's like even the Saturday session, which is two sets of 10 times 30 second hills or 200 meter hills, that has still been made event specific. If I'm a 1500 meter runner and every single Saturday in winter, I've done 20 times 200 meter hills, probably pretty fast because it's reported around seven or eight lactate. I know for a fact that every single Ingebrigtsen brother to hit seven or eight lactate would need to run very fast uphill. That's a very good session for 1500 meter. If I was going to do that session with 5k in mind, 10k in mind, half marathon, marathon, I'd likely be moving to 60 second hills, maybe even two minute hills, trying to still hit that lactate of seven or eight. So I'm still copying the system, but I'm just making it a little bit more specific to what I do. I could alternate where maybe over a month I might do the 30 second hills because, you know, it's still good to work on that power and that speed. And then you could maybe move to minute hills, two minute hills, etc. Maybe even four times five minute hills. That's making it specific to you and the race that you run. The Ingebrigtsen model is just a model. Most people don't follow a model. And so that's why if you first went to their system, you could handle it and you didn't get injured, you're going to have success because you're following patterns. Tuesday means something, it's double threshold. Thursday means something, it's double threshold. Saturday, you get into some specific work. For the first time in your career, you might go one month, two months, three months, following a system. What a lot of people will do is they'll love the threshold day and they'll want to always do the threshold day and they'll forget that you also need to do this specific stuff. It's easy to do threshold. Even double threshold is not that difficult on the body if you do it at the right intensity. What's difficult is over time, including the specific sessions in the model without getting tired or injured. So the system itself, I, I think it's, it's a stroke of genius. If you want to implement it into what you're doing, I think you need to learn a level of probably relevance is what I'd say, specific relevance, which is a weird way to say it, but you need to make it specific to you. If you currently look at the last week or the last month and you've ran, let's say you've ran 40 miles, which is 10 mile a week at an intensity above easy recovery, likely trying to copy the Ingebrigtsen model is going to lead you getting injured or tired. I said a month, I didn't say a week. A month paints a better picture. When I ran 209 in London, I was doing 25 mile a week above the bottom end of threshold, which is the Ingebrits in their morning session, the five times 2K around that sort of like 1.8 to two lactate. I was doing at least 25 miles a week above that, okay? At that and above it. 
they do, well, we can do the maths, 12 Tuesday, 12 Thursday is 24, plus usually I would say probably at least 10 on a Saturday, which is their specific session, plus threshold that night. That's a lot of maths. That's like 34 miles a week. If you go from maybe your 10 and you try to do 30, well, yeah, that's not specific relevance. Why I also said relevance is because your Ingebrigtsen model for you might be that you have to do Monday the way they do it, you know, the couple of runs, 10K, 10K. Tuesday, you might try double threshold, but you might have to do three times 2K and 12 times 60 seconds or 12 times 400s. Then you might have to take two days before you come back and do the next double threshold. Then you might need to implement some gym, some physio, some recovery stuff, because you can't possibly do all this the way they do it, but not build the system around it that helps injury, recovery, etc. You might need to start sleeping more. You might need to nap. You might need to improve your nutrition so that you recover fully before the next day. This is a system. <laughs> You can't just take the little bits of it and think it'll work for you. What I think happens over time, I did it for like six or eight weeks. I think my 25 400s improved from maybe 72, 73 per 400 down to 67. I had this idea that, holy shit, what if this just keeps going? <laughs> what if I get the 64? What if I get the 63? It definitely tapers off that progression. And when the progression tapers off, that's likely when A, you need to do it longer and just trust that over time it will get better. And what probably happens is if you do it for a year, you might go from 72 down to 67 and you might not see a huge return after that. But it might be because you did it for a year and then you took your rest period and then you've got into the next year, maybe your ceiling just grows a bit higher. And so suddenly year two, because you've done it for a year and you've built a really good foundation, then you might be able to get to 66. Remember that one second per lap is kind of huge because then if you move to marathon, that's a lot of laps. And so little improvements are actually awesome. Um, learn from it, take bits of it, the biggest thing to take from it is that it's a system. It's covering, it's covering the things that these athletes clearly have deemed to help success, right? Ability to run at a fast pace with a low lactate. Yeah. Ability to create lactate, but then flush it and work with it and tolerate it while you're training. They're, they're covering a lot of the basics, but in a really amazing and efficient way. That's what they can handle is this double threshold model. You should take from it that I should be trying to get my threshold pace to its fastest pace possible without getting injured by using control. Control as in sometimes you'll break the threshold day up. Control as in you'll control the intensity, whether it's by heart rate or lactate. That's what you need to start doing. Don't neglect the part of the system that when it's six or eight weeks out from a big race, you must get specific. That's when hills, which I already think were pretty damn specific for 1500, 20 times 200 meter hills, pretty hard, kind of moving into sort of VO2 lactate. VO2 really helps uh, or 1500 meter and 5K. Even if then, if you look at the Tuesday night session, the 25 400s, again, I can already see even in the winter base model, which is the double threshold and the hill Saturday, it's still pretty specific to a 1500 meter runner. So bring in some element of specificity. When you get six or eight weeks out from a big race, maybe that's when you want to start thinking about, okay, well, I'm going to race a 10K. So instead of doing hills on Saturday, should I still do hills, but make them a bit longer so that it's more specific to 10K? Or should I start doing 10 times 1K at 10K effort, move that to 5 times 2K, move that to, I don't know, 3K, 2K, 3K, 2K, go back to the 10 by K, go to 5 times 2K, bring the recovery down, let the pace go up a little bit. You need to get specific to what you're training for and don't neglect that part. And don't neglect the part that says, if I do too much, I get injured. 
If you're going to adapt a model like this, you need to be thinking about your full year. How could I bring a system like this in? At the end of the year, what would make my year a really great year? Is that 20 miles a week at good volume? Is it 10 miles because currently you only do five miles, etc. If you're going to look at your last month of training and you've only done an average of seven miles per week around threshold and above, please don't try to do 40. If you've already achieved pretty good success doing seven or eight, imagine you were able to progress that to 15 over a year. Think of it as an ongoing system that you can chop and change and add little bits and make it work. Inevitably, what you're trying to do is increase how much volume per week you're doing at intensities that really help fitness move forward to prepare you specifically for the next big goal race. When you get closer to that next big goal race, well, what you want to do is bring in more volume at the specific pace and intensity that that next race will demand. If you've done all the foundation stuff and let's say you've done the Ingebrigtsen model for two months, it's likely what you're going to find when you do that first specific session, let's pretend it's 10 by a K, a 10K effort. If you've done all the foundation work, you'll probably handle it fairly well compared to usual, but you'll also find that you rebound really well. So if you were to go repeat it in one week or two weeks time, it'll go really, really well. And you'll notice that because you've built the foundation, that's what's going to lead to these specific sessions, not only going a bit better, but also as each one progresses, it'll build quickly. 10 times a K, five times two K, et cetera. Your rebound effect, which is you've done a session, it's beat you up a bit, you've got a bit tired, you've recovered, you're going to go do it again. That's the rebound. You want that rebound to be better. If you haven't done all the foundation stuff, that rebound won't be better. If you've done too much threshold and too much volume and you've entered this well of fatigue or tiredness, you won't rebound and get better. You'll get worse. I think runners forget that that's something that can happen too. We don't always get better. Sometimes you can get worse. Overtired, overtraining syndrome, etc. Use the model. It's bloody led to a lot of people running really well. I think if anything I learned, I think people just neglect the specific part. You still have to race and just be careful with how you build it in terms of how much volume per week you currently do as a total and as a how much volume do you do per week above threshold. I've done other videos on threshold, understanding what threshold is, how to run at threshold, what that effort means how to control that, how to maybe test for that. But today was more of a, everyone's talking about this Ingebrigtsen model. They bloody deserve everybody to be talking about it. They're running so, so well. I don't like to delve into other people's training because who am I to say this is how it's supposed to be done? Who am I to say this is the best way to do it? But I'm trying to dissect it in a way that makes you ask questions if you're going to start trying to adapt it to your training. If I could go back and do the Rotterdam build up again, I would copy the system, bits of it, a lot of it, but I would move the reps from 2Ks to 3Ks to 4Ks to 5Ks as I got closer to the big dance, the big day. With eight to 10 weeks to go, I'd have worked on that. Okay, we've got, you can run a 2K in six minutes, which is three minutes per K. Your lactate's two, that's incredible wow, you could run a really fast marathon. But when I get to 10K, it might not be two anymore. And so I didn't work on that extensive fitness. And you do that by lengthening the rep, shortening the recovery. So you can move from 2Ks to 3Ks to 4Ks to 5Ks. And over time, you'll build that ability to run a bit longer and keep that lactate lower. So you're burning less fuel and you get to the bloody finish line. I put so much emphasis on emphasis on getting faster in those 2Ks at 2 lactate, I forgot that I needed to last longer. So make sure you get specific. I've probably spoke way too long and I hope that helps. If you like this stuff, if you'd like to learn more about building a program around the program, which is the recovery stuff, you know, your nutrition stuff, psychology, strength conditioning, how do these boys stay injured? doing this entire system, go to the website joggingroom.com. That's a, there is plans on there, 
but there's also how to train, how to you know manage your nutrition, your strength, everything that you do around the training. That's what that website's all about. So go check some of that out and have a great day. Like, subscribe, take care.